Hi guys, welcome back. This is Mike Hermes at MH Tutorials, and today we're going to deal with a subscriber question. Okay, and the question is this. Uh, when you're modeling a living room, dining room, whatever room that is, bedroom, uh, sometimes you have, you know, decorative art on the walls, uh, photo frames, paintings, and so forth. Now, what if you want to have a painting on a wall that's framed and so forth? How do you go about creating that? Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. All right. Now, first of all, what you start off with is the actual painting itself. Okay, so we're going to create um, uh, a rectangle shape, something like that. We're going to give it some height, not too much. Let's say something like so, and we're going to hit five for shaded mode. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to right click on this. We're going to go to face. Click on that face, make sure you're in your polygons menu, and we're going to right click and assign new material. Okay, we're going to go with the Lambert. We're going to click on the checkered box here. Select File, and now you're able to uh, you know, upload and position the file that you want to use. Okay, so I'm going to click on my folder. Now, I got a very cool painting from a buddy of mine, Eric Stitt. This is an example of his art, Lakota Man. And, uh, you know, I think that's pretty awesome. So you should certainly check out his art. And I'll put his link uh, below this video so you can see what else he created. All right. Now, obviously, it's not aligned yet. So we're going to select that face, create UVs, planar mapping. Okay, and let's see if proportion-wise this works out. Okay, so we're going to go to Edit UVs, UV Texture Editor. All right, we're going to right-click, go to UV, drag select that, and just uh, make this a bit smaller so we can see what's going on with our painting. All right, and we're going to hit R, and we're going to Scale it out a bit, hit R again. Okay, just make sure that our situation is correct. So we're going to push that back a little. Maybe something like that. Okay, so right click UV, drag select that, push that in. Okay, all right. So we get that position correctly. Cool. Then we are going to right click, go to object mode. We're just going to make that a bit thinner. Something like that. All right. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to position a little framework around it. Now, how do we do that? We're going to create another um, uh, cube, so to speak going to give that a little bit of height, not too much. We're going to move to our top view. Hit W, move that over our painting. Hit R to scale it out to give it a bit more width. Scale that in. And we're going to hit W and we're going to move that down. Okay, and just Make sure that you have some spacing around it. Now, the best way to level that out uh, properly is to select your painting, go to the polycube, set all translate values to zero. So it's nice and centered. We're going to take that guy and we're going to do the same thing. Okay, all zeroed out, right? So this makes it a bit easier to, you know, figure out whether your proportions are right or not, okay? So now that we got that, we are going to right click, go to face, select that face, edit mesh and extrude. And we're going to hit R, we're going to scale that in. Check again from our top view. Now that's the size of your painting, so we'll just have it cover the painting just a little bit on the top and on the bottom. And pull it in there and do the same there. Okay. All right. So now that we got that, we're going to go to Edit Mesh Extrude again. We're going to hit W, and we're going to pull that down. 
until we're down there. We're going to select that face. We're going to hit delete. Okay. And let's see if we have double. Yeah, that looks fine. Okay. We're going to take these edges, so right click edge, and we're going to pull that back up again. Okay, just so we're inside. Okay, still looking good. We're going to right click on that, go to object mode, select that. Let's uh, right click, go to assign new material. Let's select the Lambert, and we're going to select a bit of an off white color. Let's say something like that. Okay, just verifying that our frame is right size wise because it seems a little bit off, but not sure. Right click edge, we'll take that edge and that edge, hit R. Let's just check whether this looks okay. Yeah, it's not too bad actually. I'm just going to try it anyway. Okay, so I'm just going to drag select these edges, drag select these edges, and scale that out a little. That looks a little bit better. Okay, all right, now for the frame. We are going to take a polygon cube. We're going to drag that out. I'm going to pull that up just a little. Okay. We're going to start to move that in. So hit W. Move that in. Hit R to scale that out just a bit. Not too much. Okay. And now we are going to right click, go to vertex, select that one and drag select that one. And we're going to hit R, and we're going to scale those in. Okay. And now we're going to select the other two. And we're going to scale everything in until we're level with that 45 angle in the corner there. Okay. So we got that. Next, we are going to right-click, go to Edge. Take that edge there, hit W, pull it down just a little, and we're going to right click, object mode, and take the whole thing and just pull it in just a little bit and push it down like that. Okay. Now we still need some fitting to do there, so Control D to duplicate. Pull it down, hit E to rotate it, like so. Make sure you're at minus 180, like that. We're going to take that, we're going to hit W, we're going to move that up until we have approximately the same spacing. Let's see if it, we can get there. And we will have to adjust that in a sec, but that's fine. Back to our top view, hit Control D, move that in, hit E to rotate that by 90, in this case minus 270, which is 180 plus 90. Move that over. Now let's get these corners aligned here. Okay, and like I said, we have some tweaking to do. Let's hit 5 for shaded mode so I can see it a bit better. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, and this will be a little bit of a manual effort. We're going to hit R. We're going to scale that out. It's hard to see sometimes, but we'll give it a try. That looks about right. Okay, we're going to go to this corner here. We're going to hit 4, right click, go to vertex, drag, select that vertex, hit W, and let's move that on top of that vertex. Let's see if that's close 
enough. Hit F to zoom in. Okay, and we're gonna. Oop. You need to take both, so drag select. Okay. Let's go up here and let's do the same over here. So drag select and align that. And we need some tweaking up here. Drag select and align that. Yep, all right. So what do we got? We got this so far, which tells us that this should be okay now. So object mode, control D, pull that up there, hit E, rotate that around by minus 90, like so. We are going to hit W, we're gonna pull that in. Let's check from our top view. Okay, we're pretty close on this. Just pull it down just a little bit. Okay, just tweak that to make sure. Right-click vertex. And pull it down just a little bit. Go up here. Drag select the vertex. Like that. Okay. So that's what we got so far. So let's select our frame. Right click, assign new material. Lambert, let's change that to black. Yeah, pretty nice. Okay. We're gonna uh, create some glass for this. So we are gonna create another cube. And obviously we want this to be nice and thin. Something like that. We're going to go to our top view again. We're going to fit this. Hit F to zoom in. I'm going to hit 5 for shaded mode. Let's see if that helps. Not really. Okay, back to 4. All right. We're going to scale that in. And by switching between the move tool and the skill tool, that will help us to get that do a good fit. Now that's fine up there, so I'm going to hit the insert key, move, try that again, move my insert, move my pivot up there, okay, which will allow me to hit R and scale the one down there. And I think we are good. Hit F to zoom in, W to move up. Okay, so we need to scale it out a little bit more. We need to be at the black edge, so. That's where we need to be. Okay, we're gonna hit W, we're gonna move that to there. Hit R, move that to there. Scale it out that way and make sure we get rid of that edge at the bottom. Okay, so we got all that. Right click, go to object mode, select our object, right click, assign new material. We're going to go with an MIA material underscore X, material tab, preset, glass solid, and replace. We got this. See, we see a little edge going on there that we need to get rid of. There we go. Looks all clean. All right. So that's our painting. Drag select everything. Uh, mesh and combine. There we go. We're going to hit E to rotate it by 90. Let's create a quick wall for this guy. And we'll right click face, assign new material, 
let's make that a Lambert and let's change that to white there we go take our painting hit W pull that up zoom in we're gonna pull that to the wall and now what's important is first of all don't stick it exactly to the wall that's good okay so give it a little bit of spacing and we're going to rotate it just a little bit we just want to get a little bit of shade okay something like so so that should be about right just going to stretch up my wall here so we don't see that in the render Right, so that should be okay, and it's level, all right. So we are going to set up some lighting. I'm gonna to go to my render settings. I'm gonna to go to mental ray because I use mental ray materials, indirect lighting, and I'm gonna use image based lighting. And while I'm here, I'm gonna select my global illumination. I got some glass going on, so I'm going to set up caustics. In my quality tab, I'm going to go to ray tracing, and I want to use ray trace shadows. And I'm going to double these values here, so 8, 8, and 12. Actually, it should be the sum of these two, so let's make that 16. And here I'm going to go with 5, and 3, and 3. In my comment tab, I'm going to change the size of my image to HD 1080, like so. Uh, let's see, we're going to select an HDRI file. So, just going to pick those up. I got a folder for that. And you can find these on uh, the Pixel Forum. So, that's a pixels-forum.com. And you can get all sorts of free HDRI files there. So, that's... Uh, Pretty neat. Uh, let's see what we're going to go with. I'm going to go with a bright scene. So I'm going to use something like that, fairly bright. And we're going to create some additional lighting. So point light. Hit W, pull that up. Pull out a little bit. Hit Control D to duplicate that. Pull it over here and pull it down a little bit. I'm going to select these two. I'm going to go to my point light shape here. I'm going to go down to shadows. And we're going to go with um, ray trace shadows. Okay. I'm going to increase these values to 4 and 12. And let's just see what we got so far. Okay. So this is our wall with our painting. Something like that. Not 100% sure that will be right first go around, but we'll just uh, give it a try. Okay. So let's give it a quick render. All right. Well, that's not bad, but we can still tweak it a little bit. So I'm just going to hit escape on that. Uh, first of all, I'm just going to select my glass material. So for that, I need to go to mesh and separate, which will allow me to do that. I'm going to go to my glass material and I'm going to scroll down and there's a setting down here in my refraction color, which is blue. And I'm going to change that to white like that okay I just want to change the color of the wall because it's a bit blown out so I'm just gonna right click um, actually I don't have to assign new material just gonna change the color go to Lambert I'm just gonna change this to something like that a bit of a reddish color so why is that not taking I'll try that again. I'll just assign new material. It's quicker. Lambert, color, 
something like that. Yeah, it looks better. Okay. So we got that, and maybe, and I'll just check my view here. Maybe I need to reposition one of my lights. So I'm going to take that one, pull a little bit over here and a little bit over here. Okay. So let's give this another render, see how that looks. And before we do that, I got that set up. I'm going to increase accuracy of my caustics. Let's say something like that. Let's go with 350, close to 350. And I'm going to set up final gathering. Okay. Let's give it another go. Now, what's important here is that you should be able to see the um, the fact that there's glass in the painting. And you want to see a little bit of shade on the wall. So that's why we didn't stick it flat to the wall, but at a slight angle, like it's uh, hanging from a nail or something like that. So let's uh, just give it a sec. Okay, this is going to take a few minutes. So I'll just pause the video until it's done and I'll be back in a sec. Okay. Right, guys. Well, render is done. Um, as you can see, uh, it, it turned out uh, pretty good. Uh, I could have uh, turned off the, uh, the final gathering. It's still uh, going for a bit. But as you can see, the end results are uh, pretty neat. Uh, so this is how you can set up your, uh, your scene if you are using a painting or a photograph or something that you want to set up. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. And again, uh, I'm going to put the link of Eric's uh, art down below this video. So be sure to check it out. And uh, he's a really cool artist. So uh, give him some credit and buy some beautiful art. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.